one ton of rugby you're looking at there. V de Bron, Mustard, Elkingston on the attack. Getting up and then we get in the pass in the ground. So they're going to try the first try of the match. For one of Britain's most illustrious rugby league clubs, the game is almost up. Hull Kingston Rovers are a million pounds in debt and threatened with closure. But they won extra time by calling in company doctor Edward Klemker. So I'm administrator of Hull Kingston Rovers Football Club. Bloody hell, final chance got this job. <laughs> For the club, the players and the fans, Klemker is the last hope. Unless he stages a comeback this season, Hull Kingston Rovers could close forever. I don't, Edward, know, actually. It's not a game that I've ever really followed. Edward Klempke and his assistant, David Thornhill, specialise in saving failing companies. It's January the 13th, and Klempke was put in charge of Hulkingston Rovers just three hours ago. That's how I said it. Since Rovers' heyday in the 80s, they have lost the winning streak, and many of the fans have stayed at home. With the club deeper and deeper in debt, the directors have been forced to call in Klemke. Hi there, lads. It's uh, nice to see you. Uh, for my sins, I'm the administrator of Hawkingston Rovers. And what that means is that we actually, in the simplest language, we are actually managing the club whilst we find a solution to the current problems. We owe about a million pounds, and we haven't got a million pounds to pay. That's the problem. And what the administration does, it actually freezes the million pounds so no one can come and close the club down, um, take away the, the, the assets and what have you. And it gives us that breathing space to find some sort of solution. The other alternative would have been liquidation. If we'd have liquidated, we'd have probably had, had an office block on Craven Park, something like that. Okay, gents, thanks very much. Thanks for listening. Thanks. I think a lot of people knew that the club was in um, financial difficulties, but not to that extent. Um, if if the club were to fall, I think you know a lot of us would not only lose a living, but you'd lose part of the, the city's heritage in Oakley and Rovers. If we don't play fair with the players, we might as well all go home now. As administrator, Klemke is employed by the club to try to keep Rovers going while paying off enough of the debts to satisfy the creditors. Well, I've been a rugby fan, you know, since I was a lad, and uh, the thought of running Hawkingston Rovers is almost like for a football fan running Manchester United. <laughs> but this is no Manchester United. Rovers is an old-fashioned rugby club with part-time players who train after work. Now the whole world of rugby league is being turned upside down. Two years ago, Sky Television moved in. There's now a big money super league with expensive players and big sponsorship. For the other clubs, it's a struggle to survive. Super League, you know, is, um, is big business, no question about it. Clubs have changed their names to trendy titles. You know, it really has uh, had a major impact on the sport. And at the same time, we seem to have had lots of casualties. Whilst everybody's heard of Hull Kingston Rovers, the fact is we're in the first division and not in Super League. Day two, and at his Leeds headquarters, Klepka calculates his position. What are the trading losses in recent years, David? You know. He decides he'll need to find a wealthy buyer. But in the meantime, to keep the club alive, he'll have to make Rovers profitable. 123, so round figures. May 96. We're actually losing about 200 grand a year in round figures. I mean, in reality, it's going to be quite hard to sell this, isn't it? I mean, uh, how, the demand for a rugby pitch in Hull can't be that high. To make a profit, Klempke needs to get more fans through the turnstiles. 
1,600 average gait for last year. If we could get up to a 2,000 average gait, you know, that, that automatically means there's more, there's more revenue in. It makes our chances of, of trading it successfully and, and the options that we've got as administrators greater. Mm. Rovers have got tough competition to win fans. How is this support over there? Well, judging by the crowds, not that strong, because you've got a t you've got a city that's basically divided by the River Hull, north south, and to the west of that river is Hull FC, and to the east of the river is Hull KR, and it, and it's as strong as that. It's a bit like Liverpool with Liverpool and Everton, or Manchester with United and City. A little bit of the twain shall Yeah, absolutely. Rovers' arch rivals, Hull FC, known as the Black and Whites, have also fallen on hard times. Once the best supported teams in the land, the two deadly opponents are having a tough time battling for spectators. It's the end of January, Rovers' first match and the first test for the administrators. Every fan means an average of seven pounds for the coffers, and the more they eat and drink, the better. Not too bad, though, thanks. I've just been discussing with these gentlemen the takings and uh, showing them that the money's safe. Good. <laughs> Good. Well, you don't know whether or not you're going to be here tomorrow, whether they're going to sell it to somebody, whether the tax man's going to shut us. You just don't know from one day to the next. We're reading the paper the same as everybody else does. We come back the next morning to work and wonder whether the doors are going to be shut or not. I was in a church this morning in East Hull and uh, I was amazed because somebody else was doing the uh, intercessions, the prayers, and they prayed for all keeps and Rovers. And I was really pleased. So there's prayers going in all over East Hull, it's marvellous. Not in West Hull, in East Hull. <laughs> Up the Rovers! Winning matches not only brings in more fans, but there's a cash bonus from the Rugby League depending on where they finish. The first match is a cup game against an amateur team, and this time Rovers pick up an easy win. people came and we took their money off them so uh, it wasn't as bad as I thought perhaps we've broken even it's February and while Klempka struggles to make a profit former rugby player Tim Wilby has big ambitions and thinks Rovers could fit in with them the thing is that we've got a new generation supporter coming through now the old diehards are getting old and they die off What's happening now is that the new generation of supporters are coming through who they want to watch and support a top quality side. Super League Rugby League, that's what people want to watch now and nothing else. The lower divisions, unfortunately, they're falling by the wayside and probably in five, six years they'll be extinct. So we want to make sure that Hull are part and parcel of that Super League. That's where all the revenue is going to be, that's where all the TV coverage is, the marketing, the promotions and everything. It's all going to be done that way. Once the star player for Rovers' bitter rivals, Hull FC, Wilby is now a London property speculator. He thinks it's time to invest in rugby, and he's looking to Rovers to make his next fortune. Wilby puts in an offer to Klempka's colleague, David Thornhill. Are you able to give me an indication of what, what it is that you're going to come to us with? We're looking at about... Sorry, do you want a response to that? <laughs> I think you've given it, have you? <laughs> <laughs> the administrators reckon Rovers are worth at least half a million, double the offer. 
I'm only, I'm only the oil rag, but um, I'm pretty sure that if I discuss that with Eddie Plemper, he's, he's going to, well, he's going to suggest, if, if, if we start a meeting on that tack um, and your first sentence is an offer at that sort of level, um, I'm pretty sure that Edward's uh, first comment's going to be, well, should we, go, should we go and have a beer? With just one small offer on the table, the club is hit by a major setback. The main sponsor pulls out, leaving just a few hundred pounds from a local stationery firm. And their sign's been put upside down. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure not everybody would notice it, but I'm sure he will. <laughs> he's, right. he's the guy who's paying the money at the end of it. Right. So if we can, uh, if we just flip the thing around. Right, yeah. Yeah. For Rover's commercial manager, desperate for cash, it's a disaster. We've just taken down the last remaining signage. That was a, there was some signage up on the far side on the stand there. That came down the other week, and obviously we've deleted the name from the jersey. So obviously there's no contribution coming from that company anymore. Um, so at the moment, the players, the last couple of weeks, have been playing with no sponsor on the shirt. Sponsors pulling out of the line for a player, so I mean it's twenty thousand a year. Plus it doesn't sound an awful lot of money. Um, it is a serious blow, yeah. No question about that. Next day, though, there's better news. Potential purchaser Tim Wilby comes north to negotiate in person. Um, I know the city of all quite well because I did about eight seasons playing there. Oh, but it being probably the same. Well, the black and white. The black and white, yeah. yeah. But I, I know the public of all, they're very fanatical. Um, the old situation where bums on seats pays the wages. Wilby has raised his offer to £350,000, but this still falls far short of paying off the million pound debt. If, if somebody comes along like ourselves um, and offers like 35, 40, 300 pounds, at least they're going to get something. But, you know, the price that you're offering is really hurting. Um, you know, you're going to have to sharpen that pencil and uh, come up with something. I wasn't that surprised at the size of the, uh, uh, of the offer. I don't know about you, David. No, it went, it's gone up 100,000 since yesterday. <laughs> so if we can keep that going for a week, we might be, we're OK. <laughs> I think, uh, realistically, if we can get about half a million, um, we'll have done a good job. Meanwhile, down at the dockside, star player Rob Darcy is at his day job. Many of the players are creditors, still owed money for last season. A few players maybe owed a couple of thousand pound here and there, a thousand pound, that type of thing. Back money that had been owed for a long while. Um, obviously, the club hasn't been able to pay the money, and it's kept. Some, it's, you know, it's been an ongoing process of. Uh, you know, it'll be next week. It'll be next week. And now it's come under administration. You know, these players are obviously very upset. Um, and wondering how they're going to get paid what they're owed. Darcy and two other star players asked their agent to enter the scrum. A couple of my clients are owed money. I think they've been told that they won't get the money unless um, they sign contracts, so we may be held to ransom on that. But uh, only time will tell, and we'll know later this afternoon what's going to happen. Oh. Gentlemen, have a seat. Under tight new contracts, the players' wages will depend on match results and how well the team does in the league. The administrators threaten to only give back pay to players who sign up to their new deal. It feels like David against Goliath. <laughs> you lot on one side and me on the other. As you will appreciate coming from a top company like Cooper's and Liveband, these, these lads can't get uh, mortgages, etc. You know, if they don't have guaranteed money. I'm not, I'm not offering any guaranteed money. So you're asking for someone who's played, who's scored 23 tries in 22 games, that he's not worth anything? If I could pay it, there would be, uh, I would be the first person to offer it. The deal being offered is £200 for each match they win, 50 for those they lose. Plus a bonus of up to a few thousand pounds, depending on how well the team does in the league. In addition to that, if he accepts the, the offer that, that's here, then he will get his 5,700 quid or whatever it is that he's owed. And he'll get that in a lump sum. There you are, there's a cheque. 
if he wants it pound notes, you can have it in pound notes. I'm asking, not demanding here, because I never demand at meetings, whether there would be a possibility for both players to be paid a thousand pound every five wins. On top of everything else? Yeah. No. Five hundred pound every five wins? No. So you're saying there's no movement? I haven't got any money. That's what I'm saying. Mm. So you're saying that the the contracts we've discussed stand as the terms and conditions that we've agreed round this table? Yeah. And there isn't a hell of a lot of scope in there mm. for, for extra money. I wish there was. If there was more scope, then we wouldn't be, you wouldn't be talking to me, you'd be talking to the chairman, because we wouldn't be in administration. Yeah, no. <laughs> we, we accept that. Thornhill's tough stance secures a victory, and the club secretary sends out the signed contracts. Rovers still have a team. It's March, and the season is well underway. The old diehards are turning up, and the gate is well over 2,000. Rovers have managed to win their first three matches, but with no money to invest in new players, it's becoming an increasing struggle. All the other teams in the league will have uh, strengthened in the close season. Uh, winning bonus at many of those places is a lot higher than we were paying. Uh, but, you know, we have to cut our cloth to the income we've got. So we're asking people to play out of their skin because what we have got is a good coach. Do not let these people come here and start dictating to you on your patch. It's down to coach Steve Crooks to motivate the players. The next game is against tough opposition. Public enemy number one is Brad Davis. He's a skillful, sidestepping individual footballer. And he's a bloke but he's going to come along here and take some money out of your pockets and take some of your glory. Do not let him. Make sure these people do not come and shit on your patch. We make a statement out there. Let's make sure we do it right. Fortified by smelling salts and the encouragement of their coach, the players put up a brave fight. Rovers struggle to hold on to the game, but lose the match in the dying minutes. Swinton beat Goodness. That's good. Despite the two points lost, Rovers keep their place in the table. However, arch rivals Hull FC win again and move to the top. Back in London, Tim Wilby decides it's time to change his tactics. We've actually had a change of mind now. We're not actually going to go ahead and make the offer of the old Kingston Rovers. We, we've made a change of clubs. We're actually going to go for the other club in the city, which is Hull FC. But they're going to let Edward Klemke and company have some fun trying to run a rugby league club that's in administration. Uh, I don't think they're going to find it as easy as what they think it's actually going to be. Edward, reference the Hull Kingston Rovers deal. Yeah. Um, it looks at this stage as though we're going to withdraw our offer and not go any further. We've investigated the possibilities of the deal and we've decided at this present moment in time our strategy is to withdraw from the actual offer and let you get on with doing your job and see how you go on. Withdraw? Yes, we're going to okay, withdraw. Then. All right, Please, Edward. Uh, you've done it very quickly, so, uh, you know, there's nothing lost. No, okay, that's fine. Well, all the very best with it and good luck to your season that you've got coming in front of you. Thanks very much. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. He didn't sound too unduly disappointed, did he? Well, he didn't show it anyway. Um, so, as I say, we know what we're doing now. We know we've got our plans laid out. We've got to get on with them, and uh, we'll be speaking to Mr. Klemke, no doubt, later on in the season. I knew when we started this it was going to be difficult to sell. It comes, whilst it's disappointing, it doesn't come as a shock to me. I mean, you know, who in their right mind would buy a rugby league club?
Still with no money to strengthen his team, coach Steve Crooks is growing increasingly frustrated. The Super League is not going to come to all KR under the regime what we are at the moment. Certainly under administration, um, with the management of the club the way it is, we need to, um, we need, I think, considerable investment um, An ambitious young coach, what wants to be in an ambitious industry. And um, if, if that isn't going to be forthcoming, then I might as well go back and, and um, work less hours and maybe for a little, a little bit more money building ships or engineering. Two weeks later, and while things are looking bleak for Rovers, across the city, their rivals Hull FC are going from strength to strength. They now have an ambitious new owner and chairman. There's only one way forward for this club, and that is into Super League Football. Property speculator Tim Wilby has bought control of his old club, and the team's been given a new name to match its new ambitions. The highest level possible uh, professional rugby league in this country to be in Super League, and that's where we intend to go. I'm now chairman of Hull Football Club. That's part one of what I'm trying to do. Part two now is to acquire Hull Kingston Rovers, which will give me, merge the two clubs together, which will give me automatic Super League status, which is what I'm after. I want a Super League franchise in Hull. And Hull are currently at the moment are doing quite well. They're top of the first division, and, but I'm not leaving things to chance. If you control both uh, Hull Sharks and uh, Hull Kingston Rovers, um, the Rugby League would uh, almost certainly guarantee membership to Super League and all of a sudden you're playing for £900,000 worth of uh, uh, Sky money. If he owns Hull Sharks on its own, he may not get promotion. Uh, and probably what he'll do is wait till the end of the season to decide exactly what he wants to do. Because um, if he can get uh, promotion under his own steam, he will do. If he can't, no doubt he'll come knocking on our door with an increased offer. The tough talking new owner at Hull Sharks is causing panic among the Rovers fans. They now see a new threat to their beloved club. There's no such word in this town, really, in this city as a merger. It would be a takeover, and the strongest club would win at the end of the day. And unfortunately, we're not the strongest club at the moment. Not happy. We need to get a bit of mongrel into us. Not just talk. Not just the rumours unsettle the players, and Rovers have lost their last three matches. Yes, as one bloke says to me last night, while he's walking his dog in town, what went on? What went on? Can't you get a grip of them? It fucking hurts me. It hurts me. I get passionate about this fucking game, what we play. I get passionate about what we're trying to do here. We cannot afford. We cannot afford to let anything go, not at all. We've got to be looking at nothing other than a win. It's the end of April, and there's a surprise for Klemke. A new buyer has turned up, but he's using agents to keep his identity secret. He's a leading sports personality. His business is sport, his past has been sport, and his future will be sport. I usually don't negotiate with people who don't disclose their principal. I've um, accepted their assurances that he is a superstar. Rugby league is on such a, an upward spiral, and it, it's sort of like gone from your M62 corridor to a, sort of like a worldwide game. Yeah. What we want to do is with, with people like Steve Crooks is, we, again, regarded as, as one of the best coaches in the world, arguably. Um, we want to sort of like take it from where they are now and get up into Super League first and foremost. They're talking about £600,000. We've asked for a million. Um, but we have here an interested party who's come out of the blue, made no approaches until quite recently, but yet maintained they've been looking at it for some time. I start just wondering if it's actually um, perhaps merger in another disguise. What guarantees have we got that a week after we do a deal, there's not a merger with, say, another club in Hull? There's only one other club. And all of a sudden, the thing that we've done the deal for um, 
it's no longer binding. Well, well, well maybe we have to look, maybe we have to say to ourselves, if that eventuality did happen, and there's no way in our plans that that should happen, but let's take your logic. Maybe, and we haven't discussed this now, because this, you know, this is new things coming, yeah. coming in, and we may have to adjourn to discuss ourselves and talk to our principal. My gut feeling is it's, um, uh, it's the same party who came to see us previously, but uh, in different clothes. You mean Tim Wilbur? <laughs> you can say that. <laughs> well, I'm Klempke knows how much more of a prize Rovers has become for Wilby, who could get automatic promotion to Super League by merging Rovers with Hull Sharks. But as the administrator, Klempke has to try to ensure that Rovers will survive as a separate club. Now, the, the only thing that we're stumbling on at the moment yeah. is the continued existence of Hulkingston <coughs> Rovers as a rugby league club. We can use our best endeavours to take over a club, run it financially viable and get it and achieve as best we can. But what, what, what we can't do is give you guarantees or restrictions on how the business will be run in the future. I don't want waffly best endeavours. I want something pretty solid that I can rely on that convinces me you're not running out of this room to another room and signing up with somebody else. And I need something in a formula that gives you all the things that you want, but gives me what I want. But no more than you're putting in at the moment. You're putting none in at the moment. You're not guaranteeing that Hulkins and Rose is going to continue. All you're saying is you're going to continue at the end of the year. And after that, you don't know what you're going to do. We, we said at the very outset that the manager, as far as we're concerned, is a very good manager, the best, you know, say, maybe in the league, etc., etc., etc. But the club is still in administration. So you, it's very, very difficult to guarantee. I mean, we can spend a fortune on new players. We can bring in the best. And the manager we have at the moment is, a quite, is probably one of the best. But at the end of the day, if the players don't win the matches, we could, yeah, we could just fall right out of the league altogether. Now then, what do we do? What I don't understand is um, your reluctance to consider the point I'm making. What you've said is, though, that, that in, in two sides is, one, you, you want the continuation of Hull KR as a rugby league club, wherever they play. That's first and foremost. Yeah. Right. So yeah. that... Okay. Why don't we go into a separate room, leave you guys here to chew it over? Um, the numbers aren't that far apart, providing you uh, beat us halfway on the 650 million. Uh, the, well, the <laughs> well, they've been in there an hour, um, talking to their principals, obviously. The things I said to them this morning, they're taking on board. That is an encouraging sign. We're not too far apart on cash. They offered 600,000. I wanted a million, which is a little bit tongue-in-cheek. Our proposal is uh, £800,000, uh, less a guaranteed £25,000 cash at bank at closing date. And then you will um, give us comfort um, and terms to be agreeable to us that Hulkingston Rovers will remain independent yeah, okay. and will continue yeah. playing rugby league um, for a period of time yet to be agreed. Well, we've done a deal. Um, there's a long way to go yet. Um, you know, we've got to see the colour of their money. We've got to see who the interested party is. We've got to uh, talk to potentially the creditors uh, committee. We've got lots of things to do, and uh, you know, it's not over yet until we get that banker's draft. Is 800 grand what you wanted to pay? A lot more than we wanted to pay, unfortunately. But um, we believe in the club, and therefore we've sort of we have gone up to those figures because obviously. And then we pay the uh, Coombs and Laird round. Is, the more we have to, to, for, for the club, the better, but unfortunately. But we're happy, we're happy. We're, we're, we're not. We, are you ever happy with the price anyway? You know that uh, day one we'd have taken 500,000, and you also know that day one our only offer was 300,000. So we've come a long way. Are you very pleased? We are pleased, yes. It's taken four months, but you know, we're there. While Klemka tries to tie up the deal, Rovers at last have something to sing about. Although they're still doing badly in the league, they've got to the final of a cup competition. You need to be thinking about positives, are you? 
thinking about your first input into the game. A little bit what you're going to put into this game for our team. When we started and in, in, you know, went into administration, you know, we thought that would be the end of the team, you know, the club all together. And then to eventually get this far, you know, it's a dream come true. Appearing at Wembley is worth £30,000 for Rovers. If Rovers win, they get another 20. Playing a second division team, Rovers managed to pull off a victory. Three weeks later, and the deal still not been completed. The sticking point is the guarantee of Rovers' independence. The best we've been able to achieve um, regarding Hawkingston Rovers' independence is a letter from their solicitor which says my clients intend to maintain the future playing of rugby league by Hawkingston Rovers Football Club but cannot give any sort of guarantee. Pretty weak of them out. Meanwhile, there's another blow for Klemka. Despite leading the team to victory at Wembley, coach Steve Crooks has had enough. Basically, run out of motivation to fight any more fires. Feels like I've been fighting fires for for too long, and eleventh hour decisions is is the biggest biggest problem. No decisions will be made until the eleventh hour, and um, I'm afraid the eleventh hour has come for me. And I'm sure the club will survive. It's been here a lot longer than what Steve Crooks has. I would have been happier if Steve Crooks had um, stayed. I have to say, you always get something that comes and kicks you in the backside just as you think it's going well. Was that last week in your hands? Um, I'm not going to let them sh see that. The Irish buyers, though, see it as an excuse to cut the price. Part of the basis of our original discussion was that Steve Crook was staying, because he's the kingpin to the actual performance of the club. The club that's already in administration doesn't need any more knocks on the head, as it were, and it's just a further knock on the head to the club. The value of any, of any football club is built up as assets, as assets are as players and its management team, and obviously its ground and other bits and pieces. But when one of those assets left, or in this sense just walked out, the total was reduced, so consequently we have to renegotiate, because we will have to replace that asset. It's June, and the deal's still not been completed. Rovers now face their deadly rivals, the Sharks, in their most important test of the season. If the Sharks win the match, chairman Tim Wilby is virtually guaranteed to be taking his team into Super League next season. He won't need Rovers anymore. Steve Crook says uh, resignation um, is probably far more serious than we ever thought. Uh, you know, we need some points in the league now, and um, we're near the bottom of the table, third from the bottom. That's relegation zone. <laughs> Even without the motivation of Steve Crooks, Rovers start well. But in the second half, the Sharks move in for the kill.
and the black and whites end up winners, 32 points to 25. Hull Sharks are now certain of promotion to Super League. It's a whole new game for Tim Wilby. He's going to be a very brave man that comes out of the woodwork to buy a club that's continually incurring debts. The playing staff's gone, the coaching staff's demoralised. Um, it's just very difficult. They're heading for relegation. The support's down to about 2,000. You know, unfortunately, you know. It's, it's like the jungle out there, only the strong survive, you know, the weak get killed off and uh, that, that's what's happened in the whole at the moment, unfortunately, but that, that's the way it is. Gone are the days when people uh, could support two rugby league teams, we can't do it anymore. They'll run to the end of the season and that's it, they'll be gone, they'll be no more looking for some there's no room for them. It's July and the end of the season. Klemka's come to tell the players what the future holds for Rovers. The deal with the mystery buyer has finally fallen through. But in a surprise run of results under a new coach, Rovers have won four of their last five matches. Well, if you'd have told me that you were going to take four weeks running, winning pay off me um, five weeks ago, I'd have been uh, flabbergasted. But we're delighted to be paid, yeah, absolutely. Uh, delighted that um, we're up above the relegation zone at the end of the season. I think you've heard loads and loads of rumours about what's going to happen to the club. Uh, let me tell you for absolute certain that there's no offer on the table. Basically, the Irish buyers didn't complete the deal. My own suspicions are that Wilby was behind the whole thing. He's just got promotion to Super League with Hull Sharks and therefore they don't need to buy Rovers anymore. So we've got to start. Uh... After a season running Rovers, Klemka has still to find a way of paying back the club's million pound debt. But he's kept the team in the first division and they've done well enough to earn a small profit. Where does that leave us? Well, firstly, next year, there will be a continuation of rugby as Hulkingston Rovers at Craven Park. We have made £50,000 this year, but it's not enough to uh, uh, look at any sort of compromise with the creditors. We're still looking for a solution. Next week, a new group arrives at Brockett Hall with just 12 months to turn around a business which has taken a dramatic fall from grace. That's next Wednesday at 9.50 here on BBC Two.